Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. Our journey into the world of Tmux continues here in episode number two, and what we're going to do is take a look at panes. Specifically, we can carve our Tmux window into sections. We can split vertically as well as horizontally. That allows us to have something running in one quadrant and something else running in another. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to set this up and how to use this feature. But before we get into that, I need to take a moment to mention the sponsor for today's video, Akamai Connected Cloud. If you're looking for a cloud provider that's affordable, flexible, and reliable, then look no further than Akamai Connected Cloud. With Akamai's cloud platform, you can spin up Linux servers quickly, and the platform contains all the features you'll need to deploy full-featured solutions. And using the marketplace, you could easily deploy applications such as Nextcloud, Rocket Chat, Mastodon, WordPress, Pi-hole, Plex, Jenkins, and many more. In fact, there's over 100 applications available in the marketplace. If you want to set up a custom Linux instance, you could do that too. All the popular Linux distributions are available on the platform, including, but not limited to, Debian, CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, and many others. In fact, even Arch Linux is available. So check out Akamai Connected Cloud with the URL that you see on the screen right now, which will do two things. First, it'll help support this channel, which I'll really appreciate. And it'll also get you $100 in starter credit to check out the platform. And thank you yet again to Akamai for sponsoring today's video. I really appreciate it. Now, let's continue with Tmux and learn how to create panes, which is what we're going to do right now. And before we dive all the way in, let's brush up on what we've learned so far. As we learned in the previous episode, Tmux is a terminal multiplexer, and, more or less, that's a fancy term to describe something that can create terminals within terminals. Again, more or less. One of the more popular benefits of Tmux is that it keeps your session running even when you're no longer connected to the server. But what I also mentioned in the previous episode is that aside from persistence, Tmux also gives us the ability to create horizontal and vertical splits, aka we could create panes. And that brings us to where we are now. Let's take a look at how to create panes, or split, the Tmux window, and that's what's going to be the main subject of this particular video. The first thing I'll do is activate Tmux, and again, we do that by typing Tmux just like that. And like I mentioned in the first episode, we know we're using Tmux because we see the footer bar there at the bottom. Now, the first thing that I'm going to show you how to do when it comes to splitting the Tmux window is how to create a vertical split. Like I mentioned in the first video, we can send the prefix key anytime we want to get Tmux's attention. If I was to type ls, for example, I'm not working with Tmux, I'm working with a shell. There's no difference when it comes to the commands that I can enter within Tmux when compared to other commands on a Linux shell, because we have a Linux shell right here. But if we want to work with Tmux directly, we want to give an instruction to Tmux itself, we send the prefix key to start doing that. So again, to send the prefix key, by default, is to hold down Control, and while you're holding that down, press letter B. After you press those keys, you can release both of them, and then you give Tmux an instruction. So what I'll have you do right now is type a percent symbol. So hold Shift and press 5 on your keyboard. And as you can see, that split the window. It split it down the middle. We created a vertical split. Now I know working with Tmux so far is probably pretty strange if you have no experience working with it before. I mean, it's almost like we're playing finger gymnastics around our keyboard. I mean, we're holding down control and stretching our index finger all the way to B to send a prefix. Then we're holding shift and pressing the percent symbol to create a vertical split. But here's the thing, it's going to get a lot easier. In the last video in the series, I'm going to show you how to set your own prefix key, whatever you want it to be, and I'll also show you how to customize additional shortcuts as well. In fact, you're going to make Tmux your own, and you're going to configure it to work the way you want it to work. But until then, we're going to continue using the default prefix key in Tmux, and use the default shortcuts as well. That way we know how to use Tmux itself, and then we can especially appreciate episode number 5 when we go to customize Tmux. Anyway, let's get back to Tmux, and I'll show you even more about how to create splits. And next, I'll show you how to split the window horizontally. Again, we'll send the prefix. We'll hold control and press B. 
And after we do that, what we're going to do is send the double quote symbol. And I've created a horizontal split. Now notice that the split is going to be created in whatever quadrant you're currently using. And we see a cursor right here. We see the white cursor. That means that the bottom right quadrant is where I am right now. So if I was to start typing a command, for example, it's going to be typed wherever that cursor appears. But at this point, I have a few different panes. I have a large one on the left, and I have two smaller ones on the right. I was able to create that by first creating a vertical split down the middle, and then on the right-hand side, I added a horizontal split as well. But how do you move from one pane to another? Well, here's what you could do. We'll send the prefix key, and then we'll press the left arrow. We'll send the prefix key again, and then we'll press the right arrow. Prefix, up arrow, prefix, down arrow, prefix, left, prefix, right. You get the idea. So we're able to move in between these quadrants or panes within Tmux, and whichever one the white cursor is inside of is the one that's going to receive our input if we start typing. Now, what we're going to do is work through a hands-on example. And the hands-on examples that I'll be giving you throughout the series will help you become more proficient with Tmux. What we'll do first, though, is we will reset our entire session. Now, there's a more preferred way of doing this, but for right now, what I'll do is just type exit in the quadrant or pane that I'm inside of right now. That's going to close it. Now I'm on the left-hand side. I'm going to type exit there as well. And now I just have the Tmux window open with nothing else. So I'll type exit again, and I've exited Tmux. And I mean I have exited Tmux. If I run Tmux and then list sessions again, we can see that there are no Tmux sessions. I have completely closed out. Now the thing is, when we send the prefix key, and then we press D for detach, we are detaching from the session. It'll stay running. But if we type exit on the last window we have open within a session, then that Tmux session will go away. So now we have no Tmux sessions at all. And that also means with this hands-on example, we can start from scratch. So again, I'm going to launch Tmux. I'll just type Tmux and press enter. And now Tmux is active and ready to go. Now what we're going to do again is create a split. Again, we'll start with a vertical split, just like last time. So we'll send the prefix, and then we'll type a percent symbol. And now we have a split down the middle. Now what we're going to do is send the prefix again and press the left arrow so we're on the left side of the screen. Next, we'll send the prefix one more time, and then we'll type a double quote symbol. So effectively, we've created the reverse of the layout that I had before, but there's a reason for that. Just work with me, and it'll make sense here very shortly. So what we're going to do next is, well, we're going to send the prefix key and we're going to press the up arrow to go to the top left pane. And what I'm going to do here is run HTOP. If you don't have HTOP installed, you can simply run top. This is what top looks like. It's not going to look anywhere near as good as HTOP does. It really doesn't matter so much though. The whole point here is I'm showing you that you can have a resource monitor in one pane that you can keep an eye on. But I'm going to go ahead and run HTOP. HTOP is something that you can install if that's something that you want to take advantage of. I also understand with my font size being so large or not seeing all that much detail inside of HTOP, I usually increase my font size to make sure that everyone can read what I have going on here, so that's just a side effect of that. But we have a resource monitor running in the top left pane, so that's pretty cool. Next, what we're going to do is send the prefix again, followed by the down arrow. And that's going to move us down to the lower left pane. Next, what I'm going to do is type journal CTL dash F, just like that. And that's going to follow logs. I'm not going to get into logs in this series. This is just an example. Anyway, I'll press enter. We could pretend that we're following an important log file in that pane right there. Doesn't really matter what's going on there. This is just an example. Anyway, I'll send the prefix again, followed by the right arrow. And now I have some status information on the left-hand side of the terminal. And on the right hand side, I have a terminal session that I can use to enter in whatever command I want. For example, I can run sudo apt update. That's going to show up on the right hand side. We even see the logging information update on the left hand side on the lower left as soon as I ran that command. We also saw some of the information change within HTOP as well. So we have a session here that looks something more like what you'd see in the real world. Now, what we're going to do is send the prefix key again followed by D for detach. And now we're back to our normal Linux terminal. 
Now what we'll do is just assume that we're doing very important work within that session. Again, to make sure that the session is still running, I can run tmux and then list hyphen sessions, just like that. And that's going to show us any sessions that we currently have running. I'm not going to go into sessions too much into detail within this video because that's going to be covered in a future video in this series. We'll be covering that in depth actually. So for right now, we'll just be okay with the fact that we're only going to have one session until there's a reason to create another one. Anyway, the session is running and we know what we were working on is safe. As long as we don't restart the system or kill the process that's holding that open, we should be good. When we want to reattach to the session, we run tmux and then attach. That brings it right back in front of us, just like you see right here. Nothing has changed. This continued to run in the background. We just decided that we want that in the foreground now. We want to see our session and work with it. And now we can. And of course, I'm going to teach you a lot more when it comes to tmux, but I think this is enough for this particular episode. So what I want you to do is practice all of those concepts before you move on. We just want to make sure that we have a good handle on everything that we've learned so far. So just go ahead and practice and then we'll move on to the next lesson. But before we do though, before I close out this video, there's one more thing that I want to teach you that I almost forgot. Earlier, I showed you that you could type exit to exit out of a particular pane, but that's not specific to tmux. That's just a Linux terminal thing. You could type exit to exit out of a session. So by typing exit, that's going to exit out of whatever session we're in. And what we're in right here is a pane at the lower right hand corner. But we don't have to type exit to exit out. What we could do is send the prefix and then send letter X. At the bottom, it's asking if I want to kill pane number two. So yeah, it numbers panes. Tmux numbers everything starting from zero, just so you know. But it's giving us a prompt right here that's letting us know that we can continue to kill that pane if we want to. And since I do, I'll just type Y to confirm with yes. And there you go, it's gone. Again, that was prefix, then X to kill a pane. And then you press Y to confirm it. Now we're down to one. So that's another thing that I taught you guys in this video, but I think that should be it. I definitely don't want to overwhelm you guys. We want to take this one step at a time. Tmux is not all that complicated to learn. It may kind of seem like that at first, but trust me, it's not as weird or as complicated as it might seem. And as we go through the series, you'll understand more and more about how to use Tmux. So you know what? We'll just take it easy and have fun when it comes to learning. And with that, episode number two in this series comes to a close. In the next episode, we're going to learn how to use Windows, not Microsoft Windows. We're going to learn how to create Windows within Tmux. In addition to that, there's going to be a number of new things that I'll show you in the next video. So whenever you're ready, I'll meet you over in that video and we'll continue our journey. In the meantime though, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next episode.